All right, today we're actually gonna capture Bindi. We're gonna put her in the bucket, and all we're really gonna do is weigh her, measure, and take some samples to see if she has any, uh, if she tests positive for this fungal uh, Ophidiomyces, this fungus that causes snake fungal disease. So it's kind of her fall checkup. We've gotta do that with a few snakes right now. But fortunately, she came back out of her den and came up here where she's nice and easy to catch. So all we have to do first is just very gently snag her with these tongs, lift her up and out of there, and straight into the bucket. Or we can wear. First, we weigh the bucket with her in it. And at the end, we'll take her out and weigh the bucket without her. Right, so I'm putting on these gloves because of snake fungal disease and the fungus Ophidiomyces that causes it. Uh, we try to limit the spread of it, especially here in the fall, because we think it causes extra problems underground cool, wet conditions in the winter. We just don't want to give snakes the fungus if they didn't already have it. So that's why I'm handling her with gloves. And in order to handle her, we use tubes. We've got two here because you need options. You need a tube that actually fits the snake well. It's kind of a critical part of this. Uh, let's see, I'm also gonna use the tongs we already used with her right here. And sometimes this goes smoothly and sometimes it's a struggle. We'll see. So first things first, I want to figure out which one of these tubes will fit her more snugly because I don't want her to be able to turn around in the tube. I think this will be our best one. All right. Now, the trick is just getting them to actually go up inside of the tube, which can be much easier sometimes than others. You can see, I'm just trying to start her head in there and gently prod the back of her in hopes that she does that. And then once she's nice and far up that tube, just grab her here. Probably could have used a smaller tube. She looked a little bit uh, heftier than I thought she was, but that's not a bad fit. I might grab a smaller one and switch her down here in a moment, but there you have a look at her. She's a beautiful golden yellow snake. Very, very pretty. She could stand to maybe get a meal or two, but she's not terribly skinny. So she's in decent shape. Look at that. Beautiful snake. about 87.5 mm -hmm. snout vent okay. 95 total looks like she has about <laughs> 10 rattle segments, and you can see her rattle does have a little bit of a taper, which means you could kind of project out how far out the end of her rattle would be if it hadn't broken. Uh, it's hard to say for sure, but with 10 segments and a little bit of a taper, she couldn't be much older than 10 years. She's probably under 10 years old, but it's hard to know for sure uh, around that. A young adult female, I would say. Well, we know she's a female. She's probably young. So now we're going to take some of these swabs, if you can hear me over the rattle. Yeah, that's better. Now we're going to take a few swabs on her body to see if when we send this in, if there's any hint of Ophidiomyces on these swabs. So we'll do five on the top and on the side, on the side. We really don't like this, and then we do them on the underbelly as well. We'll do some facial swabs here in just a moment. So you see we use this long-handled set of tongs here while she's in the tube so I can reach her face and swab the around the pits, around the eyes, the nostrils, all the areas that sometimes tend to get lesions from this disease uh, to get a good sample. Now, ironically, we don't ever hardly see lesions on the face in snakes that have the disease 
here. It's mostly on the back half of the body, on the body, on the, on the ventral scales. But she looks good right now. No hint of lesions. That's a good sign.